Peace, 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 Israel. Come on in and let me get comfortable in your home <clears throat> and get yourselves lectured <laughs> because our people need a lecturing. And this is So You Israel. What now? A lecture. And this lecture today is to do good on the Sabbath. This lecture had to be separate from the no pleasures video so that it doesn't get lost and mixed. I wanted it to be a whole separate video or the father wanted me because that it just dawned on me to say do it. Do a do good on the Sabbath. I said, okay, because really the pleasures then, you know, because sometimes pleasures, it can come to do good may come off and seem as pleasures, and you may um find yourself not doing it when you probably could have did it, should have did it, and was probably supposed to be there at that time and place because he works like that. He works like that. So, to do good on the Sabbath, I want to um, first address truth. I don't think myself to be right. I am not right. People are not right. We speak truth, and truth is right. Understand, people that get in powers and positions and authority, they're not right. But they're speaking their own truth to, to the people to gain their confidence. So, you'll have those that will hear truth and be like, that's not doing enough. Because, or you doing too much because they either know you, knew you before you came into the truth, and, you know, your walk is still a, a, a quite stumbling. But however, to the not doing enough, and... Be, have spite in their own hearts in regards to how people do live and how people do present things. If you don't have full or total understanding your own self, then you should not speak against it. You should not have aught within your own heart in how another brother or sister handles something. So, um, because it's easy to do wrong. It's easy to do wrong. It's hard to do good. It can be so hard to do good sometimes that we miss our blessing because we don't listen to that inner voice that says, don't go this way, don't go that way. Or that voice that says, turn here, turn there. But you inwardly fight yourself and say, I know I'm going to go here. And then now you go the and do the opposite and find yourself in the midst of, I should have. I felt it. Some told me. And now you have to suffer the consequences. And I'm telling you, suffer righteously in spirit suffer suffer righteously because you went down the road to test your patience <laughs> yes you did you found yourself backed up <laughs> should have got i should have got off that exit <laughs> you see it you should have got off that exit 
So you can literally drive down the lane to get on the next exit because you know that lane going to get on is already going to be clear. So instead of taking what was tugging to be a clear route, we oftentimes choose the route that <clears throat> have us with the constant, I should have, dang it, I knew it. Some told me. So, <clears throat> it's easy to do wrong and to be mad and to have with malice in our heart towards one another because we can't say to treat one another the way that we want to be treated because everybody don't want to be treated the same way. Everybody don't live the same way. Everybody's not living to serve the most high. And I'm going to stop there and get into um, and continue. Um, okay. Um, now, to do, to, do, to do good on a Sabbath and keep it a delight, you know, um, let's say that if you um, your spouse smokes, smoke cigarettes. I'm just going to say smoke because I don't care what it is they smoke. <laughs> Besides, I'm not speculating. I'm not even going to go into this. I'm just going to say smoke. And you know what I mean? Because I, I ain't trying to believe that they on them rocks out there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so if you don't know what I mean by rocks, I'm, don't go look into it. Um, but still, if you have a spouse that smokes, husband or wife, don't don't harass them. Don't be convicted them. Don't be nagging them about you, you, you know it's the Sabbath. Don't ever throw your don't ever throw somebody's walk in their face. Don't, don't do it. Because guess what? You're not right. And you're going to find yourself in error at some point in time. Because guess, because sometimes when we, when we not supposed to be um, bothering ourselves with something or concerning ourselves with something, whether we want to or not, we will find ourselves doing it anyway. <laughs> and and you, want, you want a good example? <laughs> Peter. <laughs> Peter's like, no. <laughs> Look. I'm going to use, I'm going to say the Christ. So, <laughs> the Christ tell Peter, you going to deny me three times before the cock crow. Me? Oh, no, I'm not. Could you imagine being told that you, <laughs> mercy, was going to be told that you was going to deny him not once, not twice, but three times. You didn't. <laughs> there was a man down. Walt, uh -uh. I ain't, ain't going to deny him. Guess what? He couldn't be made a liar because he was perfect. The Christ was perfect. He couldn't be made a liar. <laughs> what happened? It happened. Denied three times. Denied three times. You talking about wanting to have a conversation? Have that have that kind of conversation among yourselves. We can't say what we won't do and be picking at one another about as though our walk, no, as though our walk 
is so holier than thou because we're not holier than thou. Don't be harassing and picking at your spouses about smoking on the Sabbath day. Spouses that do smoke. If you ain't got your smokes on the Sabbath day before the Sabbath day, you have to wait until the sun go down after the Sabbath. After the Sabbath is over, then you can go purchase. But if you don't ran now, and, and if you are even, for those that even are trying to work on tempering themselves, for those that are even trying to work on slowing down on um, smoking on the Sabbath, ask the Father to be with you. And another thing you could do, run out before the Sabbath. If you see you almost out, run out. Because guess what you can't do? From that evening through that next day, you can't go get another pack. And that day is supposed to be a delight. So don't trouble or worry yourself. You go in like a, a spiritual soldier, father. Work with me. Because why we uh, fear and on we oh, fear and trembling our own salvation. We walk in fear and tremble in our own salvation. Don't trouble each other. Don't do that to one another. It's already a fight within them in their own self. That's if they choose it. And I will say this as well. That man went out there to get sticks. This Understand, we don't have the full entire detail, but understand that man that went out there and got them sticks. He went out there to get them sticks because he did not prepare enough. He did not prepare, which means what? Which means he, he was going to burn that fire or he had to go get some more to kindle fire. We, we, there it, fire, I'll do um, the firing, look, because there are, there are, there was the menorah. We took, we have had the menorah take from us. We have we are a people, a nation, whose identity has been stripped from us, and our own identity has been stripped and pieced and scattered. Not just us, but our identity amongst all the nations. All the different nations have a piece of our truth, a piece of our history and how we are supposed to walk and conduct ourselves. We are spoiled and robbed. <laughs> I'm getting off topic. But uh, so, don't pester your husband or your wife. Don't pester each other. That man went out there to get them sticks. If they ain't going out there to get some cigarettes, if they not going out there to get cigarettes, if they are going out there to get cigarettes, that's an issue. If they not, quit tripping. That man, until you have a full understanding of that man's background, that story, and, and, um, and again, let's get to the root of the matter. The root is he went out there and they said he did not prepare. He did not prepare enough. You have to stay warm in your home. And if you want to think of it as um, some still in combat, look, I don't care. I don't care, but I do care that you are harassing my brother and my sister that do smoke. Leave them alone. That's their own. That's their own wrestling. 
When they ask you for their help, you humble yourselves and be there. And as a matter of fact, if a spouse is, I know I, I re strike that as a matter of fact. <clears throat> I will say, personally say, that when you, see, I, I just lost it because I want to strike because I didn't want to say as a matter of fact. But um, if the father want me to say it, it, it'll come. But um, yeah, don't be harassing. Don't be harassing each other. We we are not perfect. If they ask for help, you be humble enough and be there for them. That is their own struggle. That is their own walk in trembling and wrestling. All oh, right, I was finna say as a matter of fact. Again, I don't want to say as a matter of fact, and I don't want to be here what I was finna say. So um. If I say as a matter of fact, it's my own matter of fact. All right. That means that there is some lack of attention. That means that you not being each other's breath of fresh air. I kid you not. There is nothing like having support. And if your spouse don't find themselves not liking it, look, if if you was married to them before and they were still smoking, then you ain't got nothing to say. If you married them and they start smoking afterwards, somebody got some work to do. You not, it's, it's too much tension. But um, but that's all I'm. I, is that all I want to say about smoking? Um, no harassing, convicting spouse about smoking on the Sabbath. No purchase of smokes on the Sabbath forbidden. The man did not prepare enough sticks. <laughs> and say, what should we do him? Burn him? K kill him? Kill him? Kill him. <laughs> look, we want, look, I, I just want to throw this out there. <laughs> we want to allow everybody, we want to say that everybody can get into the kingdom, <laughs> but, but how many following? I mean, that's why it's us that scarcely getting in by the skin of our chitty chin chin. <laughs> so, don't, don't bother your spouse. Seriously, find another space in the house, and you and you definitely don't ever in your life treat your spouse like a dog, like they need to go outside. Now, if you hiding and smoking, then you keep you keep on hiding. <laughs> keep on hiding. Okay, you don't get used to. Being out there smoking. So if that's what you get out there. And um and um even still, I mean, even just make a designated area in the house, someplace by the window, someplace by the um door, you know, have a seat. Communication between spouse means everything. That's going to be a, that's definitely another lecture. So <clears throat> that's the smoke on those cigarettes. And that's my thoughts on smoking. Um, the next thing would be um, helping others when it comes to emergencies. When you come into this truth, and when I say truth, I mean knowledge of knowing that what? So you is real. What now? You are on the Sabbath day. As a matter of fact, you should make your Fridays. Fridays is the last day <laughs> that anybody can contact you. And the Sabbath day is the last. You don't want to hear from nobody. Okay? You are to be con you are to be everybody's last 
absolutely last, you're the last result. Bottom line, when in emergency, when in helping others, somebody done had a flat. They don't know nobody. If you're somebody actual dependent and know that they don't have nobody, you go take care of that. Don't leave them stranded. Don't leave them stranded. You don't owe nobody no. You don't owe nobody no explanation of why you got to go. You got to go. Don't fight with yourselves. Don't trouble the Holy Spirit back and forth. Oh, should I, shouldn't I, shouldn't I, shouldn't I? Oh, I shouldn't have done that. <clears throat> you are to establish when you come into the, this truth that your Fridays, you yourself need to establish your Fridays and Saturdays, but that's in the next, another lecture coming up. You need to establish your Fridays and your Saturdays that you are not to be contacted, that you are to be the last, absolute last resort to call. Why? Because your daddy said so. <laughs> and if they say, well, why not? Because my daddy says so, because this book says so. Okay. <laughs> I can't. I can't. Yes, it is okay to go help in any emergency that is not breaking the law. Whether it's man's law, um, city laws, and biblical laws. Go help where help is needed because more than likely you are supposed to be there. Whether you realize it or not. Because oftentimes we are at places and don't realize right away. And sometimes days later, <clears throat> till not even at all to recognize that we were where we were supposed to be. At a certain point of time. Because of something. Because... People come into our life <clears throat> for a season, okay? Um, if, you're, if you have family that you're obligated to take care of, understand this. Again, establish yourself in the truth. Establish, when I say truth right now, what I mean is, <clears throat> keeping the inst keeping the instructions. When I say the truth, when I say the truth, I mean keeping the law, statutes, commandments, the truth, the dietary, Exodus 20, Leviticus. When I say that's what I mean, the truth, that's what I'm saying in truth. And if I have to point that out, I will um, point that out. But, um, <clears throat> so yes. You're the last resort, but if, and if you're called upon help, you let it be known. How do you establish? You let it be known to your family. You are unavailable Saturday. When the sun go down Friday to the sun go down Saturday, you teach them what a day is. You let them know Thursday and Friday is your last day to contact me. There was nothing wrong with helping others because when the Christ came, then he talked about the ditch. Then he talked about, um, then he asked the man in the crowd about, say, if, you, if your um, cow fell in a ditch, what you going to do? Look, if you to go help it, what do we, okay, I'm going to stop there. <clears throat> that's enough of that. Now, that's. Helping others in emergencies. It's okay to do good. Now, when you interact with these people during this emergency, your conversation is to stay directly on the emergency 
it is to be in regards to the emergency only. You are there to assist, help when you can, and you get back to your Sabbath, get back to the Sabbath of rest. Okay? Your conversation, don't get thrown off. You let them know, I'm here for you, but let it be known that I can't. As a matter of fact, the first question you ask when you are called in an emergency is, how many people did you call before me? You cannot be the first person unless you're the only person. Make it clear. Your walk is your own. To those, again, to those who you're doing too much, your walk is your own. <laughs> your walk is your own. I'm here. That's why I'm lecturing you. Because we want to... Um, um, have other folks thinking that they can't, there are things that they just can't do that it would be okay and may seem like borderline pleasures, and it's not. Um, <clears throat> now, um, that is helping others. Okay, emergency, emergency shelter. If you need to help somebody and um, help shelter them they must either they must keep the sabbath either they must keep the sabbath or find somewhere to go that night to spend the night that night and then to come back tomorrow night after the sun come go down they got to find somewhere to spend the night if they don't want to um if they if they you ain't got time you don't have time to be troubling yourself. You give it to the most high. You give it to the most high. You let it go. You don't trouble yourself. It is what it is. But what you ain't got time for is for somebody to come walk up in your life to try to tell you, I kid you not, that's some of the ways um, that you will find where you are level-wise and your fear, <laughs> big, uh, um, and as an as an, as an short example, um, when I was eating chicken, it was a point in time where um, my my bro, my sister, my nephew's father, had fried some chicken and my chicken was like split and it was a quarter leg. Now I had picked up my chicken and I hadn't bit off of it yet. So when I laid it back down on my plate, I laid it down <laughs> backwards or upside down. I laid it upside down and when I looked down and I looked at my plate, I could have fell on the floor because in a moment's instant, <laughs> I thought somebody had put a pork chop. <laughs> I thought somebody switched my chicken with a pork chop. <laughs> I had to hurry up and gain my composure because I was in so much shock. I was like, I know this, I know this is my play. And I had to pull me up and pick my chicken up real quick to look at it again. Because I'm like, dang. I was so heated. And I cracked up so... I, I was crying a river of tears. I'm like, wow. That's... It was insane. So, when you find yourself getting tested... Or I won't even, it's not want, not even necessarily tested. It's being considered. Get, because Job was what? Job was, con, Job, it was asked of, have you considered my servant Job? Considered. We are being considered. So when these moments come and, and it shows time, to show your fruits 
And to show that you stand on his word, you do what you have to do. Especially if you know that they are capable. You don't have time for nobody. Especially if they're in the truth themselves or calling themselves in the truth. Because what I'm hearing, what I'm seeing is pushing me to do lectures like this. Because we need a talking to. So, if you need to shake, sh shelter a family, they are to either keep the Sabbath law as you have conducted in your household and um, do a lesson, even go to classes, class, assembly, co congregate, however you want to say. Most times when you hear, when, when I hear people say camps, I'm looking, I look at it as like it's saying universe, like a university because it's studying. It's like a college camp gathering, etc. So they must attend. Even if it's uh even if you even if you're keeping service at home, everybody let's sit around and let's get this lesson because Everybody, everyone does not have a place to assembly. Everyone does not have a congregation, at least a congregation that they are either able to make it to or whatever the case may be. Everybody does not have one. And it's a blessing now that this is one blessing that I would be okay about technology. And that's the fact that um, this word can be reached. So if you, again, if you have to shelter people and even if you have to stay home for that Sabbath, a lesson, the unclean sunset, look, that's another lecture. But um, <clears throat> do what you must to help stand on the laws. Um, what else do we have? Um, again, another form of caring for others. Ask yourself if you could do it before or after the Sabbath. Could you have did it before or after the Sabbath? Okay. That's caring for others. <clears throat> and understand, you have all Friday day, and then you got... <clears throat> and then you have like um when the sun go down Saturday. <clears throat> when the Sabbath ends, you can then go out and do what you need to do. So you is you establish your time, you work you work out your scheduling. Fear is the cure for everything. Okay, and what I mean by fear is the cure for everything. If you fear enough to want to get it right, you'll work to get it right. You'll look to want to get it right. And you'll look for right to do right and be right. Okay, so establish your schedule. Now, when it comes time to having to work, if you have to work, I want to first say, get a letter or statement that you need the Sabbath off for your con from your um elder. Write your elder, email your elder, um your whosoever you attend. Write them, ask for a statement. They will help you. Students need one for school, for Holy High Feast Days. Workers need one. Laborers need one for the job force. Okay? Acts. Because they were actually honored. Because not only that, your first statement is actually the Bible. If you can walk in first walk in there, 
with your Bible and tell your job, look, management, this is what's going on. I am a Bible keeper. I keep the law, statutes, and commandments. I just found out who I am. And I am not allowed to work from Friday sundown to Saturday sundown. And you let them know. If you need me to come, um, Friday, you let them know as well. Friday is my the day of preparation, and Saturday is the um, Sabbath day. But you definitely let them know you when it comes to Friday, you need to be off a certain time. You need to be off um, before sunset. And that means you need to, that's in another lecture, but I'll mention it here. You need to be prepped. You need early prep Thursday or before you went to work that day. You got, okay. Um, or because by the time you go to work that day, you get home, you know, I don't know. But anyway, get a, get a statement. Um, But look, if the Bible, if you first cannot walk in there with your Bible and say, this is what I follow, then reach out to your leader, teacher, pastor, preacher, okay? You need to reach out to your assembly, to where you gather, and you need to ask for a statement. And you can even go search right now online to see if they have it available for you online on their website. In the event that whether you bring a statement in or not doesn't pan out, it's okay. Because what's, what's not okay is you being without a job and on the street. When it comes to getting these days off, believe it or not, if you bring in a statement, that even the Bible just may do, they will honor that. But I tell you one thing, a Sunday person, could, a Sunday um, server can actually do that, but some actually try to pull it. But, um, but yeah, if you have to work on the Sabbath, you have to work on the Sabbath. You have to then take it to the Father in conversation. And you might want to do that before you even start to go and get the Sabbath off so that if that may, may even come with fasting and prayer for what we want because we have to um, afflict ourselves for something greater than when we want something greater than whatever. Sometimes when we really want serious deliverance and we, we really want to be heard, fasting and prayer, always fasting and prayer. But if you have to go to work, go to work. And when it comes to those days that you have to work on the Sabbath, um, it may be that you were supposed to be there. Understand that when you take it to the Father and you ask him if you should stay in this position or at this place, it, it, it may come in two different forms. The one form is promotion. Absolutely. Not only would you get promoted, they're going, your job is going to respect what you do. Because understand, he puts it on the hearts and minds of others to do as he will. Just like when he told when he told LeBay, he said, he said to him, he said, LeBay was like, oh, he was going after, he was going after Israel. He was going after Jacob. Look, look, look. 
You can go after him. <laughs> and guess what? I don't care about how you feel. I don't care about your attitude. But you watch how you speak to him. Okay? So, for that spiritual armor, fasting and prayer, and then you go and tell, and then you go and ask, and let the blessings flow. Now, the other, the other way of knowing of whether or not you're supposed to be in there is you get fired. What? Guess what? You got fired because you ain't supposed to be there because he don't want you there. Don't get caught up in what you don't have no more and what you got to wor worry about now. You get fired, you be like, let me tell you something. You get fired yourself, you be like, hey, <laughs> why you want me? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for delivering me from here. Thank you. Thank you. He may not want you at that place. And you've received the answer. And this and losing your job may seem like a loss. But more than anything, it could have been a, it, it could be the blessing. Because something that is going to be more reflective something more reflective to your no, your new lifestyle your new walk and allowing you to have the sabbath off it's to open doors and i'm telling you to understand when you talk and you speak you're doing it inwardly and outwardly give him his praises and give him his due <clears throat> So if you have to work on the Sabbath day, go to work. It, it, it probably be that you was actually supposed to be there. It may be something waiting for you, either there, on your way there, or while you're there, and maybe even coming from there. We interact with people. And we find ourselves in a place where at the right place at the right times. And in, in so many instances, whether or not we realize it or not. I mean, sometimes we realize like, oh man, if I wasn't here, this is the right place, right time. Guess what? Don't forgive to give glory, praise. Don't forgive to give glory, hallelujah. That hallelujah is... Praise Yah. Okay. So um, go to work if you need to. Um, your meals should be prepped. The only thing when it comes to you having to go to work, what you need to do is you need to have your life prepped. You shouldn't be buying no food at your lunch. You should be listening to the word on your way to work. You should be listening to the word. On your way from work, you should be listening to word. Okay? You try to continue to try to do your best to instill and keeping that word within you on that day as you can. And when you get home, you rest and relax the rest of that Sabbath. But you do your best to find your place that will allow you to have the Sabbath off because it is a commandment. You got Sunday through on uh, Friday to work. He said only one day. We got six, uh, six days of labor, only one day to rest, okay? So do your best to make it happen. And I'm going to tell you as well, if you coming out of a shady life and live kind of shady, most likely you might if, if they feel that way about you. But if they see a righteousness in you, you will have that respect. You might have to come back around 
and say, I'm really uncomfortable. You have, you have to be valuable enough for your employer to want to keep you and not to lose you. You have to show yourself of value just like in our walk, we are showing ourselves to have to um, to value our Father in reverence and re with respect, and with the instructions that He has given us to obey. Okay. Now, um, that's going to be that. So that's that. Um, to do to do good on a Sabbath, it's okay, but have no pleasure in none of it. Have no pleasure in those things that will um, keep you from keeping the Sabbath a delight, okay? But you do delight in being a help. You delight in being able to um, be there for somebody. You praise Yah that you are available, that He made you available. Because we're not always doing things on our own. And you and even sometimes it's not the time and the place. So all things happen for a reason within its time, within his time, not our time. Not our time. So um again, that'll be it. Un and understand, don't be out here hurting each other. Pointing fingers. It's okay to do good on the Sabbath. And that's to do good on the Sabbath and keep it a delight. <laughs> Shalom.